you on board here tonight. And thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully we can all have a, a time of, uh, of enlightenment. Um, we try to take care of the business as it pertains to uh, safe civility and and other infrastructure improvement issues as, as regard in regards to uh, Indian Head Highway. And uh, we want to all thank you as a part of the committee for taking the interest uh, with us, um, having that same interest in your own heart and for your own reasons. Uh, we like your own heart. I think someone's in the background. Uh, if you can kind of mute yourself for the time being. Uh, we like to thank all of you for having uh, concern for the Indian Highway um, uh, roadway traffic safety issues. Uh, we, we all have a stake, I believe, in this community for our own best interests of safety for ourselves, our, our families, our friends, our community in large. And so we want to be as inclusive as we can be uh, on this line about the issues and the topics that we discuss for each and every one of our safety and again, yeah, screen. Um, uh, uh, talking. Of civility yeah. on, on the road. So again, thank this you for being with us. Um, we're going to try to, I don't know if uh, Major Mitchell, are you on the line uh, today, sir? Yes, I'm on the line. Okay. I want to um, uh, introduce you. This is Major Mitchell, who usually starts us off on our our meeting with the, uh, uh, the the latest data statistics having to do with the cruiser uh, uh, stopping of uh, and, and issuing of citations and other traffic matters. Uh, Major Mitchell, again, a major of the uh, 7th District Police Station. He's been with us uh, for quite some time. And so we welcome you, Major Mitchell. We'll give you the, the mic and the podium at the same time and let you give us uh, your Report for the last 30 days. Uh, Major Major Jeffrey Mitchell uh, is yours. Okay, good evening, everyone. I have the uh, updated officer enforcement uh, efforts for uh, Maryland 210. And these uh, go from January 1st, 22, until only until October 8th. There have been a combined total of 1,428 traffic stops. Out of these 1,428 traffic stops, there have been 1,028 moving citations issued, 2,075 warnings, 236 equipment repair orders for a total of 3,339 citations. There have also been one DUI arrest made and seven warrant services. And then also as far as the pedestrian initiative, there have been 4,267 pedestrians contacted in reference to the pedestrian safety initiative that's actually going on on uh, Maryland 210. Does anyone have any questions in reference to those numbers? When you say pedestrians uh, initiative, what is that? It's mainly on the uh, upper end of uh, Route 210 in the district, in uh, the Division 4 area. That's where they make, uh, the officers make contacts with citizens who cross on the roadway illegally. And they give them, the, they pass out brochures and they also let them know about the warnings as far as uh, the illegal crossings trying to prevent the pedestrian fatalities that we've been having because that's the majority of uh, the fatalities that we've had this year have been pedestrians. That's a lot, that's a large total for pedestrians crossing illegally. That's a high number, isn't it? Not really. Um, remember Eastover, you have the Eastover shopping center area in it. That's where a lot of people come and do their shopping. And you have, also have all the apartment complexes around it. Um. Okay, so I understand. Both okay. sides, a lot of crossing back and forth. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other uh, areas that you'd like to elaborate on, uh, Major Mitchell? No. Okay. Uh, just in terms of the, just in terms of the, um, I guess to update everyone, uh, on the currency of affairs on uh, in head highway we I, I guess pro probably most of us uh, know or, or you will know tonight that we actually lost an individual last week uh, pedestrian 
that was uh, near the uh, overpass. We had just had the celebration uh, and ceremony uh, the, the Saturday of the 8th. Uh, it appears this individual was, um, I guess, in the right place as uh, a worker there um, on the uh, shoulder area of the uh, uh, near the overpass. Uh, it appears that there were some cones that were set up, I guess, to uh, thwart the the um, uh, the traffic uh, to keep, I guess, the the traffic to know where there was, you know, areas that they should not uh, drive uh, their vehicles um, or come Reverend close to Screen. it. And uh, Reverend yes, Screen? Uh, yes, this is Peter Campanitas. Yes, sir. Um, if I may speak to that for just a moment. Yeah, please do. Please do. So, um, yes, it was a, um, it was a worker. It was uh, the um, lane closure set up. The uh, there was the intent was uh, to. Can you can you speak up a little bit, Peter? You kind of kind of yeah. muted a little bit. Okay, is that better? I want to pump up the volume a little bit more, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you like I'm speaking in an auditorium without a microphone. Um, okay, so- There we go. All right. So um, there, was a, there was a worker who was, um, had just um, completed laying down cones on northbound Maryland 210 because they were doing work on um, an overhead sign that was just north of the interchange. And uh, the intent was to direct um, traffic onto the uh, ramp, and then they would just go beyond the traffic signal, which would take them beyond the, uh, the work that they were doing. And the, the intent was to, you know, just keep traffic flowing without um, having to do a 15 minute closure. And what happened was um, uh, some aggressive driving took place and uh, one of the motorists uh, had clipped the, um, the worker and um, um, I don't wanna to get too graphic about it, but needless to say, he, uh, he, he uh, died on the scene. And oh. so, um, yeah, um, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it's awful, needless to say. And so uh, we had a discussion about uh, you know, the work zone set up, the, the, uh, the, 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 this, the setup could have been done in a way that, um, you know, uh, could have, um, I think you know could have been a little bit uh, you know better for the for the uh, for the worker, um, um, but at the same time um, it, we're dealing with a, a different um, a different kind of driver on two ten. So what um, so what we're going to end up doing is uh, um, a, a setup that uh, will. Uh, that will force drivers to have to, you know, wait for a 15 minute period uh, while the, the signing work takes place. So it's going to be that it's going to be that kind of setup. Any and anyone who wants to get off at Maryland 210 North can do so. Yes, Ms. Uh, Schmidt Jones. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I, I, I'm just. It's, hmm. Mm -mm. Yeah. When I first, yeah, when I first heard about it, I I couldn't stomach it. I'm frustrated. I am too. I'm very frustrated. I don't this, understand I, I just, these aggressive. You know, I, I just don't understand these aggressive drivers out here, especially when work is being done anywhere. Yeah. What on earth is on their minds to get to a destination so quickly? Well, I mean, we, um, it, we unfortunately, you know, we, we have to 
uh, match the the aggressiveness of the drivers, and we have to you know make really make sure that uh, our uh, we're appropriately setting up the the work zones properly, and we're also looking at um, uh, some new technologies uh, that are out there that some that uh, that uh, uh, that are being used around the country and in, and in, uh, and uh, actually in other parts of the world yeah. to protect um, well, workers. Maybe they have a police call with them. Thing. So it's yeah, it, we're we're you know it's 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 come to a point now that um, you know internally we're going to have a. A serious discussion about it, and uh, and um, and see what we can do to uh, curtail this because it's uh, you know it isn't just a problem during normal conditions. We have this too. Um, so that's where we are. Yes, I had uh, Peter. I had um, I don't know. Is this Miss Jones still speaking, or you still had a question? Uh, yeah. Hi, um, good evening. This is actually uh, Herb Jones has his hand raised. That's I'm, I'm on my wife's uh, computer. So good evening, everyone. And I too am sad to hear about the loss of life. Uh, it's very, very unfortunate. I just had two quick questions and they may be out of sorts. So bear with me. <clears throat> the MOU issue regarding the state troopers, where are we with that in terms of... Um, and I know, uh, Reverend Green, there was some discussion some time ago about that, but where are we with that, that whole MOU issue with having state troopers having the ability to make traffic stops for speeding on 210 since it's a state highway? Um, <clears throat> sir, sir, what's your second question before he, before uh, Reverend Green answers the sure, first Sure, absolutely. Question. So my second question, uh, in terms of the, uh, the engineering, um, when you come off Woodrow Wilson Bridge, you take that first exit 210, it's just, I think, as I mentioned before, a straightaway from that exit off the Wilson Bridge to 210 all the way down the Palmer Road. There's no stoppage or slow down in between. There is a, um, um, uh, a, 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 a bleaking, flashing yellow light three quarters of the way down. But people just, I think, as I mentioned before, really uh, open up in terms of driving fast because there's nothing to impede them from that exit all the way down. But there's some thinking about not re-engineering, but coming up with some uh, ideas to slow the traffic down between that exit 210 all the way down the Palmer. Um, so the, the short and sweet answer is um, I was asked a, a, a month or two ago to, um, to look at Palmer Road because there's a couple of things happening at that location, even with all the improvements that were um, made with the upgrading of the traffic signal and the lighting um, approaching the intersection. Um, we are the to answer a question that uh, um, Ron Weiss raised regarding uh, the light pole that's laying down on the um, in the channelized right. We're looking to relocate that light, um, that street light, so that uh, it doesn't get hit. Apparently. Uh, apparently it's a target for people and it's the third, third successful target of striking that thing. Mm -hmm. So they are designed to break away, but uh, you know, three times is a little much. So especially in the, in the one year period. So we're looking to relocate it to the right of the, of the, of the turn bay. Um, and we can also look at some other things to get uh, people's attention. I hesitate to put in rumble stripes through there because they do make noise and they ha and there are people that live nearby, but if we can, you know, do something strategic with that, we will, but the long and the short of it is, that is something that we're looking at at Palmer Road. Um, Reverend Screen, uh, did you want to answer the MOU? Yeah, let me, let me, um, uh, let me hold that off for just a moment, uh, Brother Herb, I, I, we're going to get, I, I'd like to get to that, but I want to get in the flow of our presenters, yes. but I, I, I had I one more. I apologize for that. That's, that's quite all right. Uh, I just wanted to get 
one more uh, question then that came, uh, Miss Jocelyn Smith. She she's been on the line uh, with a hand raised for a while, but oh. first before Miss Jocelyn, uh, you get your question in. Uh, I think Ron um, uh, Weiss had asked, "Is was that the first worker fatality um, that you know of in regard to the uh, the overpass uh, yes. span of roadway?" Yes. Okay, that was first. Okay, so let me go right to Miss Jocelyn. Uh, Schmidt and your question. My quick question was, was that fatality at night or was it in the daytime? Because a lot of times at night, don't they have uh, police cars with the flashing lights? It happened at night. And there was um, no police car there? Or was uh, there a police car there? I don't know if there was. What I can say was it was one of those standard lane closures and uh, yeah I'll, I'll I'll answer it that way uh, the the if 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 the lane closure had done where you were holding the police if you're sorry if you're holding traffic uh, for 15 minutes at a time while while the uh, signing was getting installed overhead police would likely have been there in that instance, but uh, the redirecting of the traffic, uh, I don't think by default would have necessitated police being out there, but there were definitely arrow boards and, um, and messaging uh, to direct motorists over to the left, up left side of the roadway and uh, Okay. It's frustrating. That's all. <laughs> it's okay. very frustrating. Okay. It, 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 just, it just lends more credit to the argument that maybe we need more yes. state troopers out on that mm -hmm. highway. Okay. I'm going to, um, and did you have any, any other extension to your question, Ms. Uh, Schmidt? No, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, okay. I wanted to uh, go back to uh, uh, Herb's uh, question. Uh, about the state troop and the MOU, um, and then we'll go right in, back to Peter. I, I want to uh, introduce you properly, Peter, when uh, uh, to everyone that may be some new, fee, uh, new, new attendees on the line. Uh, Peter Caponides, who is speaking, uh, is our state highway uh, representative uh, on the line. He's been with us all five years of our existence as a committee. Uh, he gives us all of the infrastructure updates, and so he's very, uh, he's, he's the state's representative to help aid us in information and um, the things that we need to do uh, in terms of uh, upgrades or other safety measures for uh, uh, Indy Head Highway. I'm going to ask whoever has the phone ringing, please to mute that uh, from the rest of us. But uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I gave you the proper introduction, Peter, before I go back to you. But uh, going back to um, uh, Mr. Herb Jones' um, question about the uh, MOU, for those of you who are probably new on the line or those of you who may have heard it before, but let's just, let's just clear the air regarding the MOU. <clears throat> uh, we're we're, we're kind of like uh, nowhere with the MOU. Uh, the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, uh, was written up in the year 2000 uh, regarding an understanding between the state highway uh, state troopers and the Prince George's County Police Department. Uh, as all of us should know, or maybe some of us may not know, Indian Head Highway is a state road. And under ordinary circumstances, the state troopers would, would, would be the enforcement agency having priority on the state road, as I understand it to be. But the MOU that was written, uh, again, back 22 years ago now, um, basically gave overriding authority to Prince George's County Police. Well, since that time, we've had, uh, evidently, as we all know, a lot of changes in terms of uh, the number of uh, the, you know, how things have transpired on the, on the highway in terms of accidents. We've, we've had, uh, uh, well, I guess, gee, from 2007 forward, we have over 80 plus fatalities going back to 2000. I, I can't even imagine what the number would be. But we've had a lot of activity, a lot of growth, a lot of influx of traffic. Uh, the last, I think, reported traffic um, uh, number uh, in terms of number of people going on the road, I think, uh, Peter, you can correct me on this, 
something like 80,000 people a day on any hit highway. Certainly was not that way back in the year 2000. So there's been an influx of traffic. We've also had a, a lot of um, tra reckless driving issues on the, on the roadway. And now that we have Prince George's County Police who's been the overriding authority since 2000, uh, as most police departments across this nation, their numbers have depleted. Uh, you know, Major Mitchell, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're, uh, most police stations are down about 80% on terms of their personnel, in terms of their, uh, you know, in, in terms of being uh, at full staff. Uh, in other words, there's not enough police officers to go around to, um, you know, sufficiently enforce traffic laws on, on the roadway, uh, ours included. Now, I can tell you for a fact, I guess going back to 2000, because this is back during the time when I started getting interested in, in what was happening in any hit highway, and I started making uh, certain, um, I guess, the initiative moves. Uh, I, I spoke many times to state troopers that, at that time, I guess before that time, uh, up in the Forestville uh, uh, barracks there. Uh, I would talk to the overriding uh, major or command, commandant at that, at that station. And there was a back and forth about who should be having authority and this and that. But at least at that time, Prince George's County had two, two dedicated people just for traffic uh, alone. Uh, but it, you know, they, this was had to do for everybody, everybody in District 7 at that time, or District 4, I think we had already changed over to the Eastover uh, police station. But anyway, there were two dedicated traffic people for the roadway for you know, the, the area of their coverage. Uh, I believe now we have none. And so uh, with not having enough police officers on the road, with only having the, the enforcement cameras as our only uh, enforcement mechanism, you know, 24 seven there to, you know, have some measure of enforcement uh, and not having the, the state troopers on the road, it kind of leaves us very, very vulnerable uh, in that area. Uh, Herb, in a short, I guess, answer to your question, Nothing has changed since since 2000 in terms of having the state troopers with us. Uh, in spite of the fact we have made you know constant pleas, uh, I've written two personal letters to uh, uh, the governor Hogan myself, uh, you know, trying to get answers, uh, and everything falls flat. Nobody wants to you know nobody wants to answer. Nobody wants to move from where it has been. So uh, the long and short of it, we don't have enough enforcement. Uh, on, on the roadway, uh, and, the, and the MOU, uh, you know, has been unfortunately something that has been held up as the reason why we don't get the state people here with us, with our Prince George's County Police. I mean, it's no, here's what's happening, people. People will, state troopers will come down in head highway. They'll go to 228, which is Charles County. They'll come down in head highway and not patrol for enforcement, but then they'll go straight down in head highway to Charles County and pick up enforcement again. I don't know if you know that, but that's what they do. So we, we've got a very irregular situation regarding our community as far as the state trooper coverage uh, in, in, in on this roadway. So it's, it's something that uh, on this, this very committee in this very line, we've talked about several, several times, but nobody seems to want to move off a of dead center uh, in terms of, of making improvement or making adjustment having the state troopers to also cover along with Prince George's County Police to make this coverage uh, more complete. I know that I know there's the state troopers themselves don't have a full staff of, uh, of ready personnel, but, but every little bit helps and we need all the help we can get. But uh, I hope that answers your question, um, uh, Brother Herb. Uh, that's, we're, we're no, no, we're no, closer to a, a resolve on that question than we were uh, this time last year. Thank you, Reverend Screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yes, Tamara, I think you had your hand up. Um, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. I just wanted to add that um, in, it, it would be a good time, I guess, in January to revisit the, the matter when a new administration is in. Um, I think we can maybe make some um, comments to our current outgoing governor and others to say, you know, had we had some enforcement or 
possibly had, um, I believe someone correctly stated that normally when you are having nighttime construction, there's usually a state trooper um, on the road with lights flashing to kind of give more attention, even more so than the, the arrow lighting and um, what have you. And so I'm sure the state is very concerned about, um, you know, was everything done correctly and in proper protocol? Because there could be, you know, we're very litigious. There could be a lawsuit looming, not just against the driver, but uh, the family could say that, you know, the state didn't have the proper um, protections for its worker or contractor, as the case may be. And so this might be a good time to uh, revisit that, Mr. Jones. Um, we had last had a conversation with Chief Aziz, and he um, seemed more than um, understanding of the area and had, had even made a, a statement to the effect that he didn't think that um, you know, county resources should be used for uh, patrolling state roads. And of course, you know, he's, he was new to the position and hadn't gotten into, you know, all of the political nuances that could, that, <laughs> that occurs in that position. So um, we have not pushed push the issue um, much further because we were kind of focusing our attention on uh, speed cameras and speed camera enforcement and getting all the data that we need because 2023 is right around the corner and we've got to do some reauthorization. But um, I think the time is right to revisit the issue. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Tamara. That you're so very much right. And we will certainly will uh, revisit this issue and I hope to uh, this time around to get a galvanized uh, support uh, base going for not only ourselves as a community, as a committee, but also the community at large. Uh, we, we have tolerated this long enough as a community and we need state aid for, uh, uh, with by way of the troopers to uh, have their proper place in enforcement on this roadway. Uh, it's gone on too long without them. Uh, what I would like to do now is go back to revisit um, Mr. Peter Campanides, who again is our state highway uh, representative. And uh, again, Peter, I want to thank you for interjecting about um, the information regarding the uh, the loss of life um, regarding the, the the worker at the uh, interchange. But uh, I'll allow you to go ahead and pick up uh, from where you would like to normally uh, inform us about any current infrastructure changes um uh anything that you have uh i guess on your schedule of um, of events for the roadway or what have you uh so please take the mic and uh let's uh you give us your report for this last 30 days reverend screen uh good evening everyone um, i can i can barely hear you <laughs> i'm sorry i'm using my detection voice um <laughs> Good evening. Thank you, Reverend Screen. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, uh, I don't have, a, you know, a whole lot to report, um, especially uh, as it relates to good news, other than the, what would have been good news is the, pardon me, the project uh, completion for Maryland 214, if, sorry, now where am I at? That's what. That's how. That's how upset I am. Uh, Maryland two ten and Kirby Hill Road. Um, the um, the final pavement markings are in in progress of being installed along Kirby Hill Road and along Livingston Road and at the at the uh, overpass itself. I was out there. Um, this morning looking at it and uh, the continental crosswalk markings were being installed and there was uh, and and they were putting in the the stop lines and the next thing that they're going to um, 
installer, the long is the long line striping. So that's so that's a bit of uh, good news there. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to uh, talk about, uh, and I believe um, I don't know if um, my supervisor. Derek Gunn had mentioned this uh, at the ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, I can provide a little bit of an update on um, the, the next uh, interchange project. Um, so um, I'll just go through the bullet items. In January, 2022, um, M.SHA and the county executed a project task agreement to fund the interchange design at Palmer, Livingston Road and um, Old Fort Road North vicinity. Um, because of the project task agreement, uh, M.SHA was able to program $12 million, um, including $1 million in matching game revenues in the draft uh, fiscal year uh, 2023 to 2028 um, for design. So, um, and, and all that means fiscal year 2023 started on July 1st, 2022, and it ends um, June, um, June 30th, uh, 2023. Uh, M.SHA is in the early stages of the project. The initial steps of this project will include a National Environmental Policy Act reevaluation of the 2004 corridor study and development of 30% design plans. Uh, M.SHA is coordinating activities with uh, the Prince George's County Department of uh, Public Works and Transportation. So, um, Later on this month, we are um, looking to schedule a project initiation for, for this. So um, uh, that, that's kind of where, where we are um, with that. And it's, so I, I can give you a little bit of a glimmer of, of good news there, but it is going to take, you know, it's going to, take a while to, you know, go through all, all, you know, all the, all the necessary steps to move forward with the project. Um, uh, I will be looking at, you know, we'll, I'm hoping at that uh, either next month or the month after to give you an update on 210 and Palmer Road as it relates to, as it, as it, uh, you know, uh, in in regards to any any engineering um, modifications that um, may be considered, and I'm hoping that the one of those uh, is relocating the light to a spot where um, it won't get struck, um, and uh, and of course, you know, we're you know. The, our, our main thing is trying to look at uh, the you know, some engineering solutions to the uh, this pervasive speeding that's occurring. Um, uh, I, I, I keep talking about uh, implementing this um, treatment um, on the four lane section of Maryland 210 between the Charles County line and Maryland 228. Uh, and the idea is uh, to encourage motors to at least drive closer to 55 miles per hour. Um, I am I am in that final stage of sending, you know, of putting together the necessary paperwork to give to um, our, our maintenance shop to move forward with in, in installing what I'm what I'm recommending. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to um, install it um, this fall, but um, certainly after after the after the winter, those devices would be installed, and we would have an opportunity to see what kind of 
effect they have on lowering speeds because that's um, that's been the that's been the the biggest challenge um, not just here but everywhere else. So um, that's all I have for this evening. Okay. Well, thank you, Peter. I think we have a question from uh, someone from Tantala North and then Ron, I think in that order. Uh, is that Tantala North, is that Alonzo? It's uh, Dwayne Bowie. Dwayne Bowie, okay, Dwayne. And then uh, I think it's Alonzo and then Mr. Ron. Okay, so Dwayne, uh, if you can go ahead and ask your question. Sure, no problem. You had mentioned a corridor study. Uh, what was the scope of that corridor you're referring to? The um, well, there were there are two two I guess two parts. Are you talking about the the last thing I was talking about? Not the very last. You had mentioned it I guess two minutes into your presentation um, um, about a course a corridor study um, as part of I guess these million these you know funds et cetera. But oh. uh, but of course a corridor study need to be done. And I just wanted to know what was the scope of that work. Okay, so um, if you're talking about um, the next interchange projects um, or um, at Palmer Road, Livingston Road, and Old Fort Road North, um, there is um, a reevaluation that needs to occur um, from the 2004 corridor study. Um, and all that is is updating the information uh, from that 2004 corridor study and determine um, what the appropriate configurations should be for both Palmer Road and Livingston Road when they um, when when uh, they come to the final design for the interchange. Okay. I think I understand what you're saying. I know I sounded like a little bit of a word salad. I'm sorry, I apologize. But... <laughs> you're you're slowly fading out there. Yeah, I'm it's, sorry. I'm... It's a little bit of a word salad. Yeah. Okay. Let me, <laughs> before I get to you, Ron, let me let me answer. Uh, there's Alonzo that that on the chat line that wanted to have an understanding of the MOU. Uh, as best I can give you. Well, the question. Let me read the question. It says, "My understanding of an MOU normally." involves dual enforcement that EG uh, state police in Prince George's County could you expound on this content if you know I don't have it in front of me but basically the reading was uh, the, the full uh, uh, Prince George's County was prioritized as having uh, the main uh, uh, I guess um, priority uh, placement of enforcement uh, for any uh, in the, in the highway and that it didn't exclude uh, state highway from also you know, I guess if they wanted to, because we we have had in the past joint operations of Prince George's County and the state troopers uh, in the past that have, do, have done uh, joint operations uh, together uh, on a particular day in a particular time. Uh, but it, it uh, the MOU more or less uh, gave over the overriding authority and uh, prioritizing, as I understand it, to Prince George's County police. So it wasn't necessarily a shared um, uh, I guess a type of arrangement, but one where one had authority to more or less exclusively had the uh, overriding um, enforcement placement uh, uh, to to govern enforcement on on the highway. That's the best way I can I can explain it to you. Okay, let me let me go right to Ron, and uh, and your question, Ron. I think I guess to Peter. Uh, okay. Yes. The um... Then you said there was uh, $12 million uh, that's been freed up to spend on the on the uh, Palmer Livingston uh, interchange. Uh, is that money uh, to fund contractors or is it is it used to for in-house uh, and that is just SHA? We would that's to get the project initiated to go through the process of determining what the ultimate design should be for the 
for Palmer Road and for Old Fort Road North. So we would have consultants, we would have a contractor assisting SHA with that process, most likely, just because of the fact that this is as big as it is. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if you have to go through a contracting cycle, which could take months to, to get under contract. No, it's not quite like, like that. We're We have consultants that we go to that we assign. Well, in, in my in my case, in traffic, we we have consultants that um, that we assign work to to handle all kinds of different tasks, whether it be answering citizen requests or actually reviewing plans that require review. This in the in this particular case. Um, we would have consultants who would assist in going through the that whole process of, in this case, determining what what interchange configurations make sense, and then getting it to the thirty percent stage so that uh, we can you know finalize the the, the uh, design. Um, I. I but it, is, but it is something that's going to uh, take time. Okay, all right. And so, so you have a, you have an ongoing contract that you had a task to to do this work that you're talking about. Well, we have a we have contractors that we go to, and we're going okay. to assign to a contractor to help us with the process. Okay, okay. Uh, if I just mind add what uh, I that we talked about the MOU, I'm going to put the uh, MOU on on the uh, the M M um, MD 210 traffic safety blog um, this evening. So anybody who's interested in reading it can, can see it. And I've, I've got that um, that site on the, uh, in the chat. Okay. Well, thank you, Ron, for that, because uh, I think that would be go a long way in kind of uh, explaining. Uh, well, it will give the details of what the um, uh, what the MOU, MOU is stating and where we stand with it. Um, and, uh, you know, we can you can kind of determine uh, each of us can determine for ourselves, you know, the reading and its understanding. Um, I've had uh, two. Uh, well, at least I'm, I'm sorry, one, one other uh, chat message that has uh, come up. I'll read the question. And I think this is Peter, maybe it's directed to you. It says, uh, when exiting 495 South to Indy Hit Highway, the white lines separating the lanes are very faded. If someone is not familiar with the lanes, an accident can happen. Can the lines be painted again? And so uh, that's from a Denise. And so that I think that's something uh, uh, Ron, I mean, uh, uh, Peter, that um, directed to you. Um, can you can you give an answer towards that or a comment towards that uh, question? Um, where is that location again, please? Uh, uh, 495 South to Indian Highway. I guess it's coming off, sounds like it's coming. Oh yeah, yeah, coming off the Beltway, I guess to uh, 495 South as you get on the uh, Indy Head Highway. Uh, the white lines there, uh, as being stated here, are, are faded. And uh, there's a concern that uh, people are not being able to stay in their lanes okay. by the, by the faded that, lane markers. Yeah, I can bring that to the attention of um, our, our, uh, my contact who has the striping contract and see if uh, the contractor can go down there and and uh, restripe those lines there. Okay. Okay, very good. Was there any other questions that we had for Peter uh, or uh, Major Mitchell at this time? Yeah. Let, me, let me go into some things. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, and I, I think it would be 
Uh, for I know we have some new um, attendees on the line, and I want to thank all of you for being with us. Uh, we just had, uh, not this past Saturday, but Saturday before last, we just had a, for those of you who don't know, uh, a ribbon cutting ceremony for the overpass. Uh, as Peter was explaining, there's still a few odds and ends uh, uh, completion details that have to still be done before it's completely, completely done. But we wanted to have, uh, because of uh, different scheduling issues uh, and that sort of thing, we wanted to have a, um, a ceremony for the overall completion of the, of the overpass uh, before the weather sets in uh, going into our winter season or late fall. And that was, that was done very, um, very uh, successfully on on the 8th uh, of the of the month uh saturday uh at 10 o'clock i'm sorry that for those of you who were not able to be there we had in attendance we had the uh council chair uh, calvin hawkins we had a representative uh, mr holt who was the vice um i guess the just under miss uh, also broke from her office uh we had delegate valderrama we had the state senator uh, ob patterson uh, I think there was a, uh, someone from uh, Charles County. I don't remember the name. Forgive me for that. But um, th it was it was modestly attended, but it was it was a very well put together ceremony. And just for everybody's information, uh, the overpass that we have as a community cost us cost the taxpayers uh, one hundred and thirty million dollars. Uh, this is not, uh, in my viewpoint, any kind of uh, small project. It is something that I think we can all share in, in terms of uh, being, um, we, we, can feel, we can feel good about that in, in terms of having it uh, nearest completion. Uh, certainly the amount of money poured into it speaks for itself. Uh, the project started in its con construction phase started in 2016. So it's been six years of construction and all of us have felt uh, the angst that goes with that period of time and the lane closures and everything else that has gone with it. But it has meant uh, quite a bit for, for all of us, I think, here in this community. Uh, I'm a 44-year resident. I can go back to many years of, uh, ago when the last major infrastructure uh, change that was take pl took place on any head highway, and that was adding the third lane that was uh, uh, occurred back in uh, 1989. And then the annex of the uh, overpass going to 295. So it's been that long since we've actually had something uh, in a major upgrade for uh, Indy Head Highway. So this overpass was was uh, well wanted for a long period of time. Uh, we're just about have it completely done. It's something I think we can all feel good about we, that has made a, a difference in our travel time going northbound or southbound. Uh, just as a by the way to each and every one of you. Um, the span between the Beltway to Palmer Road was uh, declared in 2018 the number one congested span of roadway in the state of Maryland. And that was based on uh, information I got from AAA um, uh, during that time. So your, your travel times were something, it was not your imagination uh, when you were stuck in traffic, if you were going southbound, uh, you know, at that time on that side of the roadway, you, you were you were in a major traffic tie up uh, recognized, I think, I believe it's an organization uh, by the name of TRIP that, uh, that does studies of that nature. Uh, they did the study and I think from Fort Washington Road North in the morning was the number one uh, for a period of time as well uh, during that time. So we have been as a community in uh, a, a lot of, I guess, uh, time wasted, time spent, uh, time, uh, you know, in, in, in all of this anxiety that all of us have felt one time or another in that span of roadway. So this overpass is a major, major uh, improvement. And certainly when we get to the next one in the period of time, whatever it takes, we hope that it will also bring its known improvement uh, that we're all awaiting for in this community. Let me get back to something that I think this, that needs to be uh, really stated, and I'm going to try to be as brief as I can, and that, because there may be some comments that need to go with some things that I, I, I just need to convey to you. I think we need to we need to <coughs> recognize some things as a as a body of those concerned citizens here in this Indian Head Highway Committee committee. 
uh, and community. We are, I, I, in my estimation, we're almost like in the place of a perfect storm. Uh, a perfect storm of things that uh, are not going for the betterment of community outside of this overpass that I just fin finished uh, speaking about. Uh, next year, we have a sunset clause that uh, for, the, for the three cameras that we uh, have working for us, uh, the standing 24 seven century, uh, that, that's basically uh, the only 24 seven enforcement agent we, we have at this point in time, um, and it's, the cameras are doing what they're supposed to do, and that is recording, uh, you know, the speeds up to the degree that they can, uh, the infractions up to the degree that it, they can, and what they're showing is, is a roadway that is very dangerous. Uh, as I mentioned before, the last time we were on the line, um, I have not been getting the type of currency in reporting that we were getting at one time to give you a month to month update of the, of the camera reporting. Uh, there's, and part of this perfect storm is the issues going on with, um, unfortunately, with the vendors giving the current, right, current information that we were getting at one time to let all of us know exactly what is going on in the personality and the character of this roadway. Uh, the last batch of information I got uh, gave some very disturbing numbers, uh, it, like in the month of May for, one, for that one month. And I, and I got a batch of, reports going from April, May, and June, but between the, the three months, uh, May seemed to be the worst, where there one rep uh, camera was reporting uh, uh, speeds up to 168 miles an hour on one camera, 162 on another camera, and 155 on the third. That has become almost normalized now. When I look at the reports that I have, uh, it seems like month after month, there are e at least speeds going up to about 140 miles an hour caught on somebody's cam, on one of the three cameras. Now, that's part of the perfect storm. Uh, the other part of the perfect storm is, I said a little bit ago in 2023, uh, with the sunset clause, if we don't have the update current information to justify the cameras, all three of those can be gone. So in other words, we have, uh, unfortunately, um, the way things are in terms of the number of police officers uh, not being able to be on the, on the roadway uh, like we would like to have them, because there's just not enough in, these, in the stations. They're down to 80% or whatever it is that they're uh, not at their full staffing. We don't have the, the, the enforcement agencies uh, in numbers out there like we would like to have for Prince George's County Police. We have no state troopers out on the roadway uh, at this point in time. Uh, one of our cameras that we had at the Palmer Road intersection going northbound for the uh, and what was the work zone, that is no longer there. Uh, we have a newly paved road from Palmer Road to the Beltway where pretty, right now the speed is 45 miles per hour. Pretty soon, that's gonna be a straight way uh, of, of racing uh, as it already starting to, to happen. Uh, and, you know, so it, I guess you probably have noticed uh, many of the flex flows along uh, pretty much all of Fort Washington area going in, uh, on Indy Head Highway, uh, flex poles on both sides of the roadway. Why are the flex poles there? Because people are using the shoulders as a, as a roadway. Uh, people are using the shoulders uh, going mock speeds at, at highly, uh, you know, egregious speeds. And they're there to keep the people on the roadway, to keep them from running through intersections and having a calamitous accidents and, and those stations. So all of these things are happening at the same time on this on this road where any head highway we need a major shifting of things to happen uh for our safety on this roadway and I'm, I'm just assuming everybody wants to be as safe as the next person on this roadway for yourself and for the community but it's not safe when we have people going as egregious speeds 168 miles an hour it's not safe when we have people going on average i mean you know cameras are going at least 140 some miles per hour every time i get a report no matter what the month is it's not safe and not having, you know, uh, the a sufficient number of enforcement uh, people there, and not, and here's the other part: when people are getting caught uh, by the cameras, at this point in time, they're only paying forty dollars. I don't care if you're going 168 or if you're going uh, 67; they're only paying forty dollars. So the deterrent factor is not there. So these are the things when I'm talking about when we say uh, a perfect storm of things that are going on on this roadway. Uh, we, we're not getting the help and the assistance that we need as a community 
to be safe on this roadway. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do, and we've been putting a lot of emphasis on uh, in terms of this committee, is to try to change and escalate the fines. Give making the fines from the cameras, that is, uh, more than $40, something having the cameras issue, uh, issue uh, uh, citations somewhat in line with what would happen if a, if a, if a, if a, if a, a police cruiser would call, pull someone over. I mean, somebody going 168 miles an hour, I'm, I'm just assuming it's going to be open a thousand plus dollars for that type of uh, infraction if they got caught, if they were pulled over by a cruiser. Well, that's, that's similar to what we're trying to get with the camera, something close to that where the camera infractions that are, are given can be something more than $40 that they are right now. So that's where we have been putting our emphasis on to try to get legislation going into the new General Assembly uh, time span uh, or, or um, uh, law period time in the first of next year to get some passage of that uh, that would help. Now, that's not going to be the silver bullet to, to, to solve all the problems, but it's, it's one that I think would help in terms of making a deterrent factor where the where the uh, where the cameras are, so that's and what what I'm saying when I say a perfect storm. All of these things that I just mentioned are happening at the same time. Not having enough law enforcement, having a sunset clause on the on the cameras we do have, having lost one of the cameras, uh, possibly losing all three of the cameras next year, uh, and then having people going breakneck speeds at the same time, all at all at once. So. We're going to have to be as a community. We're going to have to take ownership if we want a change on this thing. All of us are going to have to sign up to be a change. We're going to have to make this effort and fight from our own efforts together as a community. We're going to have to start writing to people. We, this new governor that comes in, uh, we're going to have to first day. We're going to have to put something on his on his desk that we need better. We need state trooper coverage on a state road. There's no reason for not having that. It's just it's just ludicrous that we got a state road without without state trooper coverage that they can go down anywhere in Prince George's County on this road, any highway, and not have any enforcement uh, you know uh, initiatives in mind, but then get on the other side in Charles County, the same road, and then pick up enforcement. That's what's been going on since two thousand, and it's ludicrous, and none of us should put up with this. But it's going to have to come from more than just this committee to make that these requests known. We're going to have to come together as a community, as a body, and 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 flood you know the governor and everybody else that needs to to know our feelings towards this issue, and make some changes on that. We've got to get better, and we got to get more cameras. We got to get more than what we have right now. We've lost one, so we need something to govern between uh, Palmer Road and the Beltway. Uh, something in, in that particular area as well in terms of a camera. So there are a number of things <clears throat> that we still have yet to do in terms of trying to thwart behavior. We can't just throw money and infrastructure improvement without having behavior accountability improvement as well. The two have to go together. There are several places in this country that have poured millions of dollars in infrastructure improvements. Believe me, millions of dollars. And at the same time that they forward those millions of dollars in infrastructure improvements, their fatality rate has gone up. What is that? That's what's happening across this country. Now we got the additional thing that I'm going to tell you what's going to happen when they, they, they're trying to get the, the marijuana law changed for, for, you know, here in, in the state of Maryland. You can be sure, without a doubt, you're going to have more fatalities when that, if that comes to pass. The states that already they haven't done that, uh, state of Colorado, state of Washington, both of them uh, relaxed their marijuana laws, made it so it's just, you know, it's just they go out there and buy a pack of cigarettes. And both states have had higher fatality uh, associated with marijuana drivers. That's what's heading for us, the perfect storm. So if those are things that bother you, if, 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 if some of those things that I've talked to you about, uh, you know, that, that I mean, because every, you know, listen, everybody's life is on the line when you get out there and you got an impaired driver on the roadway and then you got one that's going 168 miles and may have be under the influence of marijuana as well. That's what's heading for us. So we have to 
do something collectively together, together, more than what we have done in the past, if we want a safer community. As I say again, if, if we want a change, then we all have to sign up to be a change. And that change is each one of us has to take a share of investment in our own future, our own safety. Because right now, <laughs> we don't have a whole lot of friends that are helping us in that area. We have to make ourselves known. So I know I don't like to, uh, as I've been told before, I get a little winded and get, because I get very passionate about this because I've seen as a, as a chaplain, I've seen what, you know, the road deaths. I've seen the families and the, hearing the screams and the hollers of people have lost people. It didn't have to be that way, but that's coming. It's coming unless we change it and make it better. So if there are any questions, any comments that anyone wants to make, I think I've kind of been on, been on the soapbox uh, long enough, but I, I pray that you feel as passionate about your own safety as I do for you as well. I think we have Ms. Uh, Tallis Holmes, I believe it is. Yes, um, Taloris Holmes. Taloris Holmes, I'm sorry, forgive me for mispronouncing um, name. No worries, this is my first time attending this meeting. So um, I've heard about it and, and I appreciate the work that everyone on here is doing. Um, but, but I agree with what you just said. Um, personally, as, as a longtime resident of Fort Washington, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of hearing about my neighbors, friends, coworkers dying on the roads in my community. And I'm just appalled that our legislature, like our elected leaders are just, you know, they they show up for this, this um, ceremony you just talked about, but the overpass, but what are they doing to stop people from dying? Mm -hmm. Which to me is, is more important. So um, whatever um, I can do to, um, to bring this matter to their attention so that they pay more attention to it. I mean, everyone in the state of Maryland knows that when you get on 210, I tell all my friends and family, you have to be careful, stay off 210 because you're literally just going to visit a friend or going to the store. You're taking your life in your hands. Yeah. That is unacceptable. All of us here work hard for our homes and our communities. Why should we have to risk our life just to go to the Safeway or to go to the doctor? That's just, it's unacceptable. So uh, whatever that you need me to do, I'll talk to legislators, I'll knock on their doors. I'll, I'll be a pest for them because it's important to me that everyone here is able to, to live their life to the fullest and not die needlessly on 210. Yes. It's just ridiculous. So my name is Taloris Holmes and I, if you have any committee meetings, I will be happy to assist you in whatever way I can. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. I, I really appreciate uh, your passion and, and, uh, and your concern because that I, I, I hope that I can convey that to each one on this line and so many more that's in this community. Uh, and we, we have to galvanize our efforts to, to make our, our, our concerns known and respected and honored uh, with some type of uh, response. It's, it doesn't make sense that MOU that has been written up uh, 20 years ago uh, is still in force that we cannot get state troopers on this road to, I mean, they come on the same road to go to Charles County <laughs> and pick up enforcement, but leaving at the doorstep when they come across Prince George's County, that's just not acceptable. That's just not acceptable. But we, we, we as a community have to, we got to put a bookmark in, in that kind of behavior and do something about all of these issues that I've mentioned here tonight. And what I, what I, what I truly want to do, uh, I'm just throwing, I'm just throwing you know, my, my heart's mind out to you. I, I want to get a letter writing campaign to uh, when we get this new governor in, because I know nothing's going to be done here in the waning uh, months of uh, the current administration uh, towards this this whole issue about the MOU and the state troopers. We, we have to have a letter writing campaign for that. And we certainly gonna have to get a campaign going towards this, uh, this uh, increase in fine issues. We have to get some help. We're paying taxes, we pay too much taxes. That we pay, we're paying, you know, to have this kind of condition, as you say, 
you go out to go to the local 7-Eleven, pick up a you know a loaf of bread, and you put your life on the line because you can't get on the main roadway without having concern for your safety. That doesn't make sense. But that's 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 what we're living in. And it doesn't make sense. We've got people that are out here riding on the road, have no business behind the wheel. Have no business behind the wheel, but they are in this county. I think Ms. Johnson Smith uh, has a question. Hi, this again, this is uh, Herb Jones. Okay. Um, and uh, Reverend Screen and to you and the committee, because you all have done such an outstanding job and, and a lot of hard work. I too am most appreciative, et cetera. As I think about this problem, I'm excited because I think it's one that can be resolved, it can be solved. And I think um, using a similar plan of action that the Alliance for Greater County Transparency used for the school, uh, and that was a lot of media attention and uh, sometimes in a negative way and making sure we reach out to all appropriate parties such as, you know, for years I've heard this discussion, discussion, but I, we haven't heard from our attorney general, Bra is it Brave Boy? Yes. Mm -hmm. She has a piece in this. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, things that, that people who have the responsibility need to step into. And I think setting up a maybe, uh, I'm just recommending this to you, Reverend Green and your com committee, a, uh, another committee to come up with a strategic strategy, including yeah. the, the legislators, the media, the whole nine yard protest, this is a big issue. We have to bring the attention. And my experience being in the county for three years is that for some reason, when you bring the media into it, people seem to respond. And you know that better than I, Reverend Green, yeah. and others that have been on this call. I think mean, we have to just step it up in, in that vein. And um, if we have to go to a, a, a twice a month, small uh, press conference, protest, whatever, to highlight the deaths and what else that we need to do and especially the MOU. What you yes. said about the MOU and, and again, I didn't necessarily mean to bring it up in that vein, but that's mm -hmm. unbelievable. They would drive four miles down and they, they, they're they uh, engaging in uh, stopping uh, speeders, et cetera, but come down this way and they're not doing it. We yeah. pay state tax as well. So yeah. that is unacceptable. And I think with a, a, a um, committee to set up a strategy in 2023, we really stepped this effort up and put out, as Ms. Dolores talked about, our, um, our, our legislators, our state legislators especially, especially mm -hmm. the state legislators. The state road focused on all four or five state, our delegation uh, in Annapolis. We mm -hmm. really need to bring them in on this. And I think with a plan of action in 2023, we can really get some resolve. So I'm excited about the possibility of resolving this issue. Yes. Well, thank you so much, sir. Uh... Uh, Brother Jones, you, I know your passion is always there, and we certainly uh, are going to be counting on you to be a part of that uh, that momentum change. I, I think we have Miss Jocelyn Smith. I think she's had her hand up for a, a little while now. No, no. Uh, Herbert Jones is my husband. So oh, he's okay. Speaking. Okay. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. you. You're very welcome. Well, that that's that's it in a nutshell. I don't have I don't have anything else uh, for us in terms of information. Uh, I wanted to just have time for, for, for you all to respond. I hope you, you know, have been able to digest uh, the things that have been said, things that have uh, been, been brought forth to the table here tonight. Uh, but we just had some work to do. We, we, we just have some work to do. Uh, we deserve better as a community, no doubt about it. I mean, you know, it's, it's always the squeaky wheel gets through all, but we, we, we got to do more than squeaking. We got to do some, shout, some shouting as well uh, to get some attention, whatever it takes in this. Um, as uh, uh, Brother Herbert said, you know, getting the media uh, involved in this, and if it if it means letter writing, protest, whatever it is, we we have to get better than what we have out here uh, right now. Um, and, but it's something that you know, it's not a one person deal; it's all of our deal because all of us as a community um, are affected by the the happenstance on this roadway. It's it's too dangerous. It's been too dangerous too long, uh, and it's just time to make a change. Amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Well, you know, the last thing a preacher wants to say when he says amen. amen and you don't hear anything, you know. <laughs> you <just laughs> <have to talk laughs> okay, okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen.